Okay, I have today Ashley Morris, who is the CEO of Capriati's based in Las Vegas, fast casual sandwich brand known for the Bobby, which is like a Thanksgiving meal in a in one sandwich, um, celebrating its 45th anniversary this year, yes. right? Yes. Um, so we have Capriati's as a, as a success story, looking at the numbers for 2020, it was a great year. And the um, system-wide sales, domestic sales were up 9.5%. Uh, the company has reported double digit sales, uh, same store sales increases. Uh, they've added 18 units in 2020, which was an 18% increase so for a total of 114 at the end of the yep. year. And of course, the big news for Capriati's was earlier this year, the acquisition of Wingzone. Yes. So Ashley, thanks for joining me. And maybe you can let us know a little bit about what it was that Capriati's did last year that made it such a success. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, kind of to start, obviously, you know, look, COVID has been a devastating, devastating thing for, for many, uh, for many businesses. And I think, you know, when we uh, it became real to us, my business partner has been my best buddy for a really long time. Uh, he's, he's the data junkie out of the two of us. And, you know, he started consuming a, a large amount of data around COVID, um, probably around November, December of 18. And so he was ringing the alarm bells, you know, in January and February, and I wasn't even necessarily hearing them as loud and clear as I probably should have been. Um, but uh, come February, you know, we, we, it became real. And, you know, very quickly into March, we had, you know, governments and, and, and you know, governors and, and the federal government shutting down cities across the country. And when that happened, you know, we experienced the same kind of same store sales declines that, you know, my expectation is that most businesses experienced right from the get go. So early March, uh, you know, we were tracking for the year up double digits, and all of a sudden we were experiencing 35 to 40 percent same store sales decreases. Uh, and we we did one week of that. Um, we had 15 stores in our chain immediately closed by government mandate and could not do any business at all. And so we were hit by it, and it led us to go through an exercise internally about cash flow. You know, our assumption was we did not we did not know how long this was going to last. Uh, the best information we were hearing was this was going to be a global pandemic for sure till the end of the year and possibly beyond and that there was really you know right then early march no end in sight and so it was one of those times where we had to take a really hard look at the business and say you know are we even going to survive are we even going to be here um and, and do we have enough cash to survive and so we quickly went into an exercise about cash and cash management and and you know learned that we had about enough cash to survive the year and, and at the end of the year, you know, if we, if nothing changed that we would be raising capital probably, you know, mid year to continue to support the business. Um, and that's assuming, right, franchisees don't pay royalties and stores, you know, experience a half, per, you know, 50% decline in sales, all the machinations of the horrible universe that could be in front of us. And so um, in doing so, he's one of, one of the mentors in my life who have been, who have been substantial mentor for the last 12 years of my life. He, he told me when we were going through the global financial crisis in 08, he said, he said to me something profound. I think I was, uh, you know, kind of in full breakdown about what was going on. You know, the capital markets had just frozen. We were newly into owning Capriati's. We had just made the acquisition. We had all these grandiose plans and now no franchise capital and the capital markets were frozen. He said, look, run headfirst into your problems. If you make a habit, and you make a commitment to yourself that no matter what problem you have, you run headfirst into it and you don't run away from it. You don't shy away from it. You don't pretend it doesn't exist. I promise you, you will save time, you will save money, and you will solve things that, that you would not have normally been able to solve. And the problem will become insurmountable if you don't deal with it. And that stuck with me. It was an incredible piece of advice that really did stick with me. And so in thinking about COVID, we have now found ourselves again you know, in a position where, where, you know, the world has happened to us, so to speak, you know, we didn't start this thing. It wasn't because we did something wrong. And now our brand was in jeopardy of potentially not being here. And, and so I, I heard him in the back of my, I heard him in the back of my brain saying, run head first into it. And so we kind of made the decision as a team. I said, look, we're going to be raising capital midsummer anyways, you know, and run out of money by the end of the year, then, then we might as well try 
to run headfirst into this. Let's spend the most amount of money we can spend. Let's spend two full months of cash flow on a marketing plan. And let's just see what happens. And maybe, just maybe, you know, we are positioned well to deliver. We are positioned for off-premise. We are positioned for omni-channel ordering. We had the apps in place. We had the aggregators in place. We have all the pieces. Let's just see if we can't remind the world that we're available and we're open. And so we spent $250,000 on a local store marketing campaign in Nevada, in Las Vegas only, over a 10-day period. And so I know 250 doesn't really sound like a tremendous amount of money, um, to, you know, compared to what national brands really spend, but it was spent over 10 days in one market. And the, the first week we launched it, so we had that negative 40% sales for sales. Then the next week we launched the advertising, we had about a negative 30% sales for sales. And the following week we were tracking up. We literally turned the sales from negative to positive in just having a third of the chain. And so that was really, you know, if you were going to say one thing we did right, that was really the thing we did right. And it worked. It just worked really, really, really well. Right. Um, and so once that kind of happened, we, we moved out of the thinking about what do we need to do to survive? What do we need to do to stay in business? We moved from that thinking to, okay, we know we're going to be in business. We know we're going to survive. And we know the vast majority of our units are going to continue to be open. Now, how do we, how do we, win how do we go out and do something extraordinary inside of a you know a situation that that's that's terrible and so we immediately thought that's where we should put our focus to look for other brands that are also doing well organically through through COVID that are positioned for to go and off premise and 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 you know those kinds of places obviously fast food qsr is where we're you know we where we live today and where our ex expertise and acumen is so we wanted to stay there and we wanted to try to find another brand that we could acquire. And so we immediately, probably around May of 19, I started looking for brands to acquire and that's where we found Wings Zone. And Wings Zone offering the wings that everybody seemed to be craving through COVID yeah. for one, and, and, but also and, tenders you know, and burgers. Yeah, I mean, obviously we know chicken is, is, is trendy and it's continued to be on trend. I had not understood the magnitude of wings <laughs> that quickly, you know, in May, it wasn't, it wasn't this like insane J curve of, of demand. Um, but we, we very much liked the wing space, um, you know, based on the set of circumstances of having, you know, one major player in the space, there really isn't a number two, um, a, you know, a, a definitive number two out there. And so we thought, Hey, if we got into this space, we could very well use our, exp you know, our expertise and, and use our infrastructure to create kind of that undisputed number two you know, chain in, in, in the category. So.